welcome everyone to this special town hall meeting to discuss the recon reconstruction of the 24 mile road here in Shelby Township from Hayes to DeQuinder Road. If you're tuning in expecting to be watching a taped board meeting, um, I will just say that uh, you'll have to wait till Saturday uh, as we are having a special town hall meeting. And as you know, um, if you read in the paper, we just signed an agreement uh, this past Friday to do the fully reconstructed 24 mile road. So if you're wondering why you got the, new, the news about this meeting yesterday or the day before, it's because again, we just signed the agreement um, a couple days ago. So I wanna welcome you here tonight. And um, also tonight we have um, um, some guests behind me. We have Ms. Sh Shannon uh, Flarkey from um, Shelby Township en Engineers, Fazel Khan and Associates. We also have uh, Mr. Bob Hoffner from the Macomb County Department of Roads. And we have Mr. Steve Mancini from Rickman Construction. And also to my right, we have Mr. Mohammed Jaber from the Detroit Water and Sewerage Department to discuss this project fully um, to reconstruct 24 Mile Road. We do have a picture, if you can put up picture number one, if you have that loaded, Ellen. No I think they're looking for it right now. Maybe we don't have any pictures. There we go. As it stands, 24 Mile Road is one of the poorest roads in our community and in dire need of repair. And of course, such an extensive project as we have, along with the installation of a 42 inch diameter water main, as you can see in this next picture, running parallel to an existing 36 inch water main from DeQuinder to Romeo Plank Roads, and it will have a significant impact on the community. Original estimates projected an 820 day project that could take three construction seasons to complete, utilizing funds solely from the Detroit Water Sewerage uh, Department, and that only included one lane of reconstructed road. To ensure that both the eastbound and westbound lanes were constructed, officials from Shelby Township, and I do see Ms. Mrs. Filer, uh, one of our trustees, sitting here in the audience. I'm glad she's here tonight, um, um, including uh, some other trustees, and also Macomb Township uh, worked with DWSD Director Sue McCormick and also Macomb County um, uh, Director Bob Hoffner and County Executive Mark Hacko to put together a new plan that will be discussed here tonight. And I see we have Vince Viviano in the audience as well, and I see Mr. Grove, um, our clerk is here as well. I want to thank you, Mr. Viviano, because I know you attended most of the meetings uh, along with Mr. Hacko. And while it will, of course, come with many, many headaches, we're hopeful this action will move from what 25 miles is now as you go to the next picture to a new road similar to this next picture and it's all at a cost of less than five hundred thousand dollars so to start this meeting i'm going to turn the floor over to mr steve mancini who is president of rickman construction incorporated and uh, that's headquartered in sterling heights it's been in business i think steve you said since 1965 and specializes in heavy underground construction throughout the Midwest in Florida. Mr. Mancini. Uh, thank you, Mr. Stathakis. Again, uh, my name is Steve Mancini. Um, I, I am the president of Rickman Construction. Uh, Rickman is uh, Richard Mancini, uh, founded the company in 1965. And uh, since then, it's myself, my two brothers, uh, my, myself and my youngest brother, uh, born, raised, and live here. Uh, I live in Clinton Township, and he lives in Troy, so pretty much local to Macomb County our entire lives. I have a other younger brother that r runs our Florida office. We, we do work both in Michigan, Ohio, Florida, and some of the other uh, Midwest states. Um, this type of work, uh, we call it pre-stressed concrete pressure pipe, been doing it my, pretty much my whole career since I was a very young man, so we understand it. Um, road work, we've done a lot of MDOT uh, highway work. We were the contractor that recently did that big uh, northbound expansion on M53 from I think 26 to 32 mile road. So both road paving, we don't actually pave, our subcontractors will we'll do the paving, but um, the paving prep work, all the pipe work um, will be overseen by our company and even by myself personally. I'm sure you'll see me out there. Uh, just to briefly summarize some of the key important things, uh, our company worked cooperatively with DWSD, um, Mr. Jabbar, uh, Ms. McCormick, Ms. Porter. We were able to, and with Mr. Hoffner and the township's assistance, we were able to come up with a, a 
plan that basically allowed us to repave the whole road. And, and what we were able to do is take some monies from uh, some of the staging type uh, operations that we would have had to have done and instead of in, use that monies to uh, to pave the whole road along with some contributions from the townships. Um, one other major uh, change to the project is we're gonna work through the winter. Um, that has a lot of benefit. It's gonna take a substantial amount of time off the schedule with two crews working, two mainline crews and a tunnel crew, and then obviously the paving crews. Um, we anticipate a major time savings um, and the fact that we're gonna be working through the winter, really a less inconvenience. I know um, there's just no question a, a project of this magnitude is gonna be ma major inconvenience, but when you're working during the winter, it tends to be less of an impact. And also when you shorten the schedule up, obviously it's a less impact to the public. One very important thing, it's part of the original design from the Road Commission, it's part of the same design today, is that this is going to be one way eastbound only. As we're working between the mile roads, it's critical for the safety of the public, the motoring public, for the safety of the workers that that be strictly adhered to. So there will be a, a strict uh, enforcement, there'll be good signage, and probably the most important thing for everybody to understand is, is to, to uh, re remember and, and pay, you know, pay attention to that eastbound only uh, traffic, even if, if if it's when you're leaving your subdivision, you may think it's open to westbound, but it really won't be. So uh, keep keep close attention to that. Um, there's going to be some closures for major you know crossings or the major roads, um, but there's plans in place to make that as short and, and less disruptive as possible. Uh, Mr. Jaber, I just have one question for you. Um, you talked about a timeline before the meeting. Yes. You said that there would be seven phases. Can you explain those seven phases and about how long each phase will take? Sure. Thank you. Uh, my name is Mohammed Jaber, and uh, I represent Detroit Water and Sewage Department on this project. I want to thank uh, you for the opportunity uh, uh, to be part of this uh, town meeting, township meeting today. Uh, um, we are very excited at Detroit Water and Sewage about this project. Uh, it's been in the planning for some time, and uh, uh, I'm glad to see it come to light uh, right now. Um, this project uh, is uh, part three of three parts, actually, uh, uh, plan to install a 42-inch uh, water main on 24-mile road. Uh, to run parallel to an existing 36-inch uh, water main feed. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> uh, this, this came out because of an increased uh, water demand uh, in the community here. Uh, this project consists of roughly 35,000 feet of 42-inch pre-stretched concrete uh, and we're very assured and confident to have hired Rickman as the contractor, a well-known in this business. So uh, <clears throat> I do wanna go over the main phases of this project, like uh, Rick had mentioned to me. Uh, we divided this project over seven parts, starting at uh, Romeo Plank and moving west all the way to Rochester. Uh, and we have a milestone as to when each phase is going to end. Uh, phase number one will start, uh, will start at Romeo Plank all the way to Hayes. And we, accept, we expect uh, the road to be open up to traffic both ways by the end of November. Okay, of course it will be still aggregate or uh, dirt road by then awaiting the next construction season, which would be April next year before we pave it, but which will be suitable for paving, uh, for driving. Now, uh, phase number two, it will be haze to Shannon, and uh, our target date is the end of April to make that road available again. 
The third phase is Shanor to Shelby Parkway, and uh, our target date is end of July of uh, next year before we open it back up to traffic. Uh, phase number four is Shelby Parkway to Van Dyke, okay? And our target is the end of October next year. <clears throat> now, at that time, we will uh, have the road paved with a base course, and it will be perfect for driving condition. Now, a second crew will work simultaneously here, starting, uh, I guess, m you know, mid-August of next year, and it will be from Van Dyke to Mount, and uh, phase number six will be Mount to Shelby, and our target is end of October, and then Shelby to Rochester. And that would be January, January 16. So I think through this agreement uh, that uh, representative of uh, the township in Detroit Water and Sewage and the contractor, we were able to shorten the duration of this contract from three construction season to two construction season. So uh, of course that would cut down the traffic nuisance and make the road available, uh, you know, sooner. Mohammed, um, I just wanted to mention, if I think you might have gotten some of those dates. The west of Van Dyke will start mid-November of this year. Okay. And then follow through. Um, I, I'm, I don't have my schedule in front of me, but I think it's going to, uh, the second crew, I, I think you said August, you may have meant November, if, I've got, if I got my dates right. Yeah, Mrs. Filer okay. was just asking me some questions about these dates too, and let me just repeat them, make sure I have them right. So from Hayes to Shaner will be done by the end of April. From Shaner to Shelby will be done by the end of July. From True. Shelby to Van Dyke will be done by the end of October. Correct. And then the second crew, which will be simultaneous with the first crew, will be Van Dyke to Mound, that'll be done by the end of April. And then Mound to Shelby sometime July, and then from Shelby to DeQuinder by the end of October. I so, said, yes, I, I think is that that's correct? correct. That is correct. And the reason you're calling it seven phases is because in Macomb Township, that's really the first phase. So there's one phase in Macomb Township, and then six phases in, in Shelby Township. That's correct. Everybody that's okay correct. with that? Ms. Filer? She said, "All Miss Filer said, completed by 2015, perhaps." That that is that is that is definitely the goal. And you know, with any, you know, we always like to be um, a little more conservative. the The job was scheduled to be done in 2016, but barring any real unforeseen, we we believe there's going to be a substantial savings. And our goal target right now is 2015. May it may not necessarily mean that everything is final paved. Um, obviously, you're going to get base course paving. You're going to make sure you get all your pressure tests, all your bacteria tests before you do final paving, final restoration. So it could fall over um, the following spring, but we're, we're very hopeful that that's not going to be the case. And also, I just want to make sure um, the headliners, I think you already summarized, one crew instead of two. I mean, two crews instead of one. Um, two construction cycles instead of one construct, or I'm sorry, instead of three, instead of three, and two lanes rather than one lane. So the whole uh, road will be two, reconstructed. Yeah, full, full with pavement. Full with pavement. Mr. Viviano, Mr. Gro, do you have anything to add to that? Mr. Viviano, well, hold on, because I can't hear you at home. Mr. Viviano's question was, you want to know how far they're going to go to? Going west. How far west will you be going? The Rochester pump station is the end of the project. But, but Mr. Viviano said, or Mr. Hackle, I think is going to, on his dime, go all the way to DeQuinder. Are you talking about pipeline or pavement? Pavement. That's a good question. I think pavement, would, were, as it stands today, it, 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 doesn't it end at the pump station or does it end at... DeQuinder, I'm not. That's a good we'll question. We'll look into it. We'll look into it. It'll be DeQuinder. It'll, it'll be DeQuinder. Okay. Is 
that it? Anything to add before I have questions? The question is, are these dates going to be posted for residents? And after this question, if you have any questions, just come on up one at a time, please. Did you hear the question? Yeah, will these dates be posted? In, in one of the uh, one of the things I, I will apologize. This has evolved into a pretty exciting but pretty complicated um, process, and, and we deal with what we call schedules and schedule updates, and they're very complicated. And right now, we're in the process of updating our schedule to reflect this new um, two crews working winners um, with this new pavement detail, full width pavement versus part width. So. My staff is currently working on that, and, and those schedules will be made available to the township. They're going to be attending our monthly meetings. So, you know, that process of, of keeping people kind of updated shouldn't be too difficult, and, and we can do that. Okay, if you have a question, come on up. I live right on 24 Mile Road, so I'm quite well impacted, and I'm glad to see it coming. A couple of questions I have. Are there going to be any improvements in sewers or drainage sewers? Will I see that ditch go away? <laughs> no, unfortunately, I don't see any change really to the uh, design of the road and drainage other than, um, than the paving itself. Okay, so, but we're going to be able to get in and out other than when you're in front, directly in front of our house and I'll go up north and stay at the cottage, right? <laughs> yeah, we're, we're going to maintain access to all businesses and residents, yep. but it'll always be eastbound until, like Mr. Jobber mentioned, once we get through it, we'll be full with gravel surface and then eventually full with paving surface. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Yes, sir. Anyone else? Yep, right behind. A little confused on the timing. If you go over to Mound Road on 24, they got a sign saying it's going to be closed from Mound to Van Dyke Monday. Is that when that part of the project is going to start? Yeah, there's there's several operations. There's there's the tunnels under the major drains. I think it's called the Kingsbury Drain, and that tunnel portion, which is let's call it a just to be conservative, a month start to finish to put the shafts down, to put the tunnel under the drain, and then open it back to, at some point when that second crew starts, then it'll be open to eastbound only. Eastbound only. So that, that there is gonna be a road closure at each, I think there's six drain crossings, and then there's the M53 tunnel where we have to tunnel under the uh, viaducts. So when those activities occur, some of them will require full closure because of just the depth and magnitude of the shafts in the tunnel. So I think that's what you're referring to. Okay. My wife and I live at uh, Woodbridge in Whitby, right by the uh, a uh, pump station you're referring to on, there on 24. I don't know, it, this is so much for those of you who are perhaps uh, uh, the engineering. With the new safety island that was constructed on Dequinder, which makes using the trail a lot safer, has there been any consideration while 24 is torn up to putting a safety island right by the pump station, by Whitby? No, there has not. What would be the process of sending out bids, doing the engineering study? Is it something that we can look into? Well, at this point right now, the plans have already been completed, and the contract is between DWSD and Rickman to construct the water main. The side benefit of the water main project is the fact that the township was able to work with the Macomb County Department of Roads, DWSD, and Rickman to get a full-width pavement restoration rather than just half-width but it's not involving any redesign of roads or adjustment of any of the existing drainage systems that are out there. If possible, I would ask that it, you know, it be considered because obviously the cost would be a lot less when the pavement is torn up, and I don't know what the right-of-way is, but for, for the safety of the uh, MOT users, if the, if the right-of-way is there and it doesn't involve any uh, modification to the uh, sewers, maybe you might want to consider it. And that was just my only point. Thanks. Mr. 
Rick, there's also a gentleman behind you. I don't know if they, maybe they want to come on up whenever they're. Hi. Hello. Will there be water disruptions? We're, we're in a, kind of in looking at all the um, connections and, and, and identify when and if and who will be impacted. And once we develop that plan, um, we're going to notify the township and the residents. I, I, I don't have the answer to that. I would anticipate there will be some. Um, the goal typically is to do them at night, between, say, midnight. A lot of times if there are major disruptions, more than an hour or so, we'll either do them at night or doing off-peak usage hours. But if there's going to be a disruption, there will be an advance notice given to those residents that, that will be impacted. And again, we'll work with the township and with the city to, to minimize the impact as much as possible. So a lot of times we'll give you notice to say, okay, between uh, 10 and two o'clock, your water's gonna be off. Um, so we'll typically wait till after the morning rush hour or before the evening, um, unless there's something un unanticipated, right. but that's gonna be the goal and we'll get advance notice to those that are impacted. Okay. If and when. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, I guess it probably is easier. Yeah. Just a couple questions. I, I guess is this my understanding that this water main is only going to go to the pumping station, which is just west of the trail, the orchard trail? Correct. Stopping. And when will we know whether they're going to pave it all the way to DeQuinder? I live just east of DeQuinder on 24 Mile Road. Get there. When do we get there? That's a good answer. <laughs> I think that's a Stathicus answer. It's an honest answer. It's an honest answer. I'm not, I'm not saying I can't give you an exact or if we will do it right now. I think the, the old working on the funding, right? That's yes. always the issue. Question for you is what kind of schedule will you? maintain during the day start and stop times how early will you start how late will you work typically um, on the main there's several crews main line there's the tunnel crews and then there's the paving crews typically the main line crew is going to be seven to say seven to six p.m occasionally it'll run a little later if there's if you're going under a, a critical utility or there's a crit, trying to cross a, a roadway or trying to get somebody's um, access open back up um, will work late but typically we're gonna work uh, seven ten hour uh, ten hour shifts seven to five thirty six p.m. Monday through Friday Saturdays are typically a day to catch up you might see small crews looking for problems or access issues so expect five uh, five day work weeks ten hours a day Okay, because we, we live directly across from Peace Lutheran Church and School, and I know that that's going to have a huge impact on the traffic for those folks. And for me, who live directly across the street from them, and we already have quite a bit of traffic because of school. And then with the 25-mile road project, we've, we've really been impacted all, sum, all summer long. So just wondering what kind of noise and disruption, in addition to not having a westbound lane, we will have. Well, it's large equipment, so it's, it's, you know, this newer equipment is certainly quieter than it was, you know, five or ten years ago, but uh, it is very large equipment. It's, if, if you've been there, you can expect that's the type of noise you'll hear. Um, the mainline crew has a, a, you know, that big yellow, that's called the big yellow excavator. That's probably your noisiest piece of equipment, or the... Unfortunately, the uh, Myosha standards require these backup alarms. Those tend to be a little bit annoying. So, um, but th that's probably the type of uh, noise levels you'll be hearing if you get near that where they're working now. So the project that starts on Monday is just for the Kingsbury drain, which will be from Ruan East to Van Dyke. Is that correct? That closure? Uh, that, and that closure should be short term. I, I don't know the duration, but it's it's closure enough to get. It's a big shaft. Our goal is to once that shaft's installed, to 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 allow for eastbound. And we're going to work with the city and the county also. You know, we're going to make every effort that you know once it's safe for traffic, we'll open it back up to to eastbound traffic. Eastbound only. Though. Only yes. Once you start to see work activity, 
in that area it will be eastbound only. It will not be next Monday, but I guess the Monday after. 16th, is that, is that the schedule that's posted? I, I think tentatively on 16th because we're still- It, was, it won't be this coming. Monday. Yeah, I don't believe so it. not, it'll not be this a week Monday. from Monday then. Right. It's that same crew that's working at Romeo Plank. They're going to, they, we expect about another seven days of, or another week of work and then they'll move over to the next shaft. So then we would expect sometime after the 16th to have only eastbound lanes from Mound to Van Dyke. Is that correct? Well, you'll probably be a period, um, maybe a month period or maybe slightly less than that, but without getting too much detail, I don't have the schedule in front of me, where the road will be closed, putting the shaft down. But once the shaft is complete, I'm hopeful, and Bill, you may be able to ask, answer that, but I, I'm hopeful we're gonna get the road open to eastbound only. Okay. I have my general superintendents here in the, in the audience. Yeah. Oh. While he's doing that, one thing I, uh, Bill is, is our general superintendent. He, he will be um, uh, in the field full time and uh, he certainly will be uh, handling complaints or public issues. And one thing I really want to stress that probably now is a perfect time is please call you know, our main office if, if you have any issues, I can give that number. If you'd want to write it down, it's 586-739-5210. Um, really, the best way to get a quick response is to call our firm, mention your, you know, your name, your phone number, and what it's regarding, and, and those calls will be uh, directly to Bill. And quite frankly, if you don't get the solution you're looking for, ask for me personally, and I will be sure to be there and uh, make sure these get addressed for you. Our flyers already have my number on it. Good, mm -hmm. good. So um, go ahead, Bill. Uh, this week, we, uh, we have the, the date, the 13th, on those message boards because we're going to start, because we are going to start some uh, activity this week. Uh, the actual boring probably won't start till the following week, but we're going to be dropping off equipment, casings, and, and uh, shoring boxes, things like that. But right. we'll have all signage up and barricades and flag people and all that sort of thing. Is the road going to be closed this coming week? Or is it just going to be um, kind of temporarily? Right, we'll have the, the type three barricades. Those are the, those are the big ones with the three bars on them. You know, they'll be off to the side of the road. When we actually go to shut down the road, we'll be pulling those out. But we'll have lead-in signs showing uh, the detours that will be coming up and all that kind of thing. question regarding regarding the uh, drainage the sewer lines and then the uh, water lines as far as drainage from excuse me drainage from the storm water versus drainage for sewage are they going to is that going to impact on any of those two lines there should down? yes yes um, during the construction during the actual construction activities there will be some minor impact to the uh, stormwater. I mean, obviously, we will um, disrupt the, the ditches and restore the ditches. So, you know, it's our goal to always make sure that um, those get restored daily so that there's no impact to rain events um, or stormwater. The sanitary, I, I can't envision that there'll be any disruption or impact to the sanitary systems. Um, so, no, there, there should be no issues with uh, Sanitary, but if if in the event uh, somebody has a problem, again, make sure we get notified. Are you replacing any of those lines? No, no. There, there's other than drive culverts that may get removed during the paving and replaced um, pretty much as it is currently. Uh, there's no new stormwater construction on this project or drainage stormwater drainage on this project. Always a lot of water in our 
Well, if, if you, you suspect there's a drainage issue, this, certainly this could be a time where it could be corrected. So I, I guess I'd um, suggest you give us a call and or the township. Uh, we certainly would be happy to take your call and meet on site and just take a look at it and see if there's a, a either it's a plugged culvert or a bad culvert, if it's gonna get replaced or if it needs to be replaced, we could address it then. But Oh, you then. Call us. Uh, we, we'd be happy to meet out there, meet you out there, Bill. We'll meet you out there, and we'll bring uh, we'll bring the township if uh, if if they need to be, you know, brought out. But if we'll get your name so we can get Mr. Bob Hoffner to go out there and take a look at it. <laughs> <laughs> and if he can't do anything about it, I'll call you on your cell phone, Mr. Mancini. No, we'll, we'll, uh, Dave Miller from DPW is here. He'll get your name and phone number tonight, ma'am. And, uh, we'll, uh, come out and look at it. Okay. But Mr. Mancini's right. If we do have some drainage issues, this would be the time to correct those issues as best as we can. No, no, what it means is that we're going to come out and take a look at it. And I, I wish I could say more, but I can't until we evaluate it. And Mr. Miller from our DPW is here tonight, and he'll get your uh, name and number. Thank you. Come on, come on. Oh, I'm sorry. From my road between Shaner and Hayes, I'm not in a subdivision. I'm by myself. Is that going to... Our driveway is like a gravel to the main road. Is that going to be blocked at any time? Are you on the north side or the south side of the of, of 24 mile? North. <laughs> north side. Yeah. So so there will be there will be a a point. I got to believe because it's a large operation with with big pipe that your driveway would be closed. Now what we would what we would do. And That's the only way, way I can go in and out. Yes. What we do is we will coordinate with you, make sure you're aware that, hey, it's, it's, it's going to be closed. And if there's any way we can maintain access, we'll do that. If not, we'll just make sure your vehicle's out and or you're not home when we do the crossing. I work, my husband works, my daughter's in and out. She's in college, so... Yeah, we'll have to make sure we can coordinate the best we can to, um, it just depends if there's another way we can provide access, we'll do that. If there's just no way we could provide an alternate access, we would ask that you park. Well, we can, the house is set back. Yep. So it's, it's not about parking, it's just getting in and out. Yeah, there might be a short period of time for the time it takes to lay that pipe across your drive approach that either you have to park out front or we do it when nobody's home. So we'll, Bill, again, make sure uh, we get your name and, and phone number and we'll coordinate that with you. In there? Yep, okay. yep. Because we, 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 there is going to be on some of these single entrance drive approaches or business approaches, there's going to be a short period of time to lay that pipeline that we may or may not be able to maintain access. I, yeah, I mean, we have a, our gravel driveway, but we have little ditches. I mean, I wonder if we could just go around it or something. But yep. also, we put our own driveway in, I mean, sidewalk in front of our house because it was mandatory. Is that going to be ripped up or? It, certainly, if it's in the right of way, it, it, yeah, if it's in the right of way, there's a chance that it gets damaged. If it does, it gets replaced. Okay, and then. Uh, but hopeful we're not we're hopeful not to but if it if it does it would get replaced and I have one other question speaking of drainage on 24 mile road right next to me is a subdivision and there's a big drainage thing where the water you know goes and it gets real it, it overflows every time it floods are those going to be looked at at all or no they're not going to do anything with the drainage issues I think if you have a, a specific drainage concern where you see flooding Yes. Again, make sure you uh, give Dave a call, and he'll 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 follow up and go out and take a look at it. And, and hopefully, there is a solution. Yeah, I mean, there's other houses too, but we get it the worst because we have a walkout basement. Sure, and it could be a drainage problem. It's, I mean, it's something. just not wide enough. It just can't. The capacity of water when it floods, it just can't handle it, so it just goes on each side. Yeah. Okay. Oh, hair strain. Yeah, it's a hair strain. So. Yeah, and again, I, you know, Dave can take a look at it. If there is a problem that can be corrected, now's the time. Talk to you and the gentleman. Yep. yep. Okay. All right, thank you. You're welcome. We are on the north side of 24 Mile Road. The, 
the pipeline is on the north side, which makes it a little more difficult if you're accessing from the north. Um, the because be, obviously the eastbound lane is going to be maintained, uh, but the paving will the entire uh, paving and ditch restoration will be both lanes, east and westbound, full with reconstruction. Hi, my name is Lynn Fries. I'm right in front of where you're going to be digging for the Kingsbury drain. Um, I was talking to Rick on the way in, and he said that you will be shoring up the hole that you're that you'll be digging into, so there will be little concern of um, collapse of the surrounding ground. There will be no concern. I mean, we, you know, we'll, it'll be properly shored and designed and protected, yes. Okay. And you'd mentioned the, the hours of work, and that was for the, I heard it as being the part where you'll be laying the drain. As far as this digging goes, will that still be on that same schedule? It typically, again, we, we typically work t uh, five, ten-hour days, Monday through Friday. Saturdays are sometimes a make-up day or just we call it a catch-up day to make catch up on complaints or issues that need to be corrected. There will be occasion if, if there's a problem, you know, um, <clears throat> protecting a utility or, or trying to get traffic back open or making a water main connection. There are times we'll run 24-7. Uh, typically we'll get uh, um, word out and get approval from the township to let them know, hey, we, we, we really need to work around the clock. That's. I don't anticipate that, but some of your road crossings, uh, major road crossings like Van Dyke, we may be working around the clock. Um, that's not uncommon. But okay. I doubt you'll see it off between the ma major um, intersections, north-south. Okay. South. Um, on the day that the work starts, um, I work, so I'll be coming home, you know, anytime between 6 and 8 o'clock at night. So. Um, will someone contact me if I won't have access to my driveway prior to me pulling in and seeing that I don't? Yes, I mean, and, and again, we, we, I would expect that you'll hear from us several days before we get there to let you know, hey, we're anticipating closing your driveway between such and such a time, and you should know that, and, uh, okay. you know, there should be no reason that you come home to a surprise that you cannot get into your driveway. If that happens, please let me know about it. Okay. Because someone will be there immediately. All right. Um, Make sure you get in. The scope of the, the digging and laying this part of it, that's no different than the rest of it as far as the water shutoff and water compromise and uh, pressure and all that? This should not impact, uh, other than some of the tie-ins, there may, there may be a uh, water impact. We're, we're looking at ways to either eliminate it or minimize it. And once we do that, once we have a good plan, let's call it, for making all the connections, um, if there's going to be an impact, we'll definitely let you know. We're going to try to make it to the less, the, what do you call it, the most convenient time. Right. Sometimes that's between midnight and 7 in the morning. Right. Okay, type excellent. Of thing. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes. Mrs. Filer and I were just talking about updating the public maybe on a weekly basis. <clears throat> um, we're just kind of talking out loud, but you think it might be a good idea maybe say every Tuesday by noon, maybe we do an update um, on the www.shelbytwp.org website. So if everybody wants an update, they'll know that at minimum on Tuesday, by Tuesday at noon, there will be something new written. And it could be three or four times a week, it might be six times a week, but at minimum, every Tuesday, we'll have the up-to-date, here's what's happening on 24 Mile Road. What do you think about that? Because you would be the contact person. Uh, to get the updates? Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I certainly would be, be um, would like to sit in with our staff so that our staff can update you as to schedules and s such. I, I don't have those type of specifics, but we'll work somebody with our, like our project uh, manager will work with maybe somebody in the township. Perfect. To weekly make sure updates? you have those updates, correct. How about weekly updates? Yes, okay. yes. In fact, I think some of the township officials are joining us in our biweekly uh, progress meetings, and, and we'll try to keep that, okay. that synergy going. Mr. Grove, are you okay with that? 
Okay, so the clerk's office will help uh, coordinate that as well. And uh, Mr. Viviano, I know uh, if there's anything you need, uh, we'll, we'll get that on the website. Okay. Yeah, we, we probably that would be a good uh, good time to establish what we're what we're updating progress where we're at. Okay. Um, so we'll kind of identify what what we're going to update on, and then we'll make sure that gets done. The website is www.shelbytwp.org. Again, that's www.shelbytwp.org. And, and I think it, that, that is a good good idea. If we can identify where we're working between what mile roads, what's what's the anticipated, you know, some of the major um, items that I think would be uh, helpful to the to the public, we can do that. Also, weekly, our Facebook page will be updated, and uh, Twitter, whatever that is, I don't know how to do that, but I guess we have a Twitter account that'll be updated too. So, sure. okay, good. Um, anyone else? Clarify when you said that when the road is eastbound traffic only, and then maybe at some point there will be no pavement whatsoever, but it'll be drivable still. Is that going to be during winter months when there's snow? And what about snow removal and plowing and clearing and all that fun stuff? The, the road will be r really under our um, maintenance. Obviously, if the road commission sees something they don't like, they're going to. They're going to either remind us or do, the, do it themselves, but we will have people full-time maintaining that roadway. It, it, it will be a, a, a gravel, let's call it a gravel survey. It's actually going to be a little bit better than gravel. It's those asphalt millings, which, quite frankly, pack up almost back to like asphalt, but it'll be well-maintained. Um, again, any complaints, please call us. Um, my staff will be on it. There will be people on it you know, full-time to make sure that that road is maintaining to the standards that both the township and the county require. All right, and then just to clarify, all your work is gonna be done on the north side of 24 Mile Road. There are some major uh, valve chambers that really take up the whole road. Uh, so there will be some spots that we are working, um, installing these valve, we call them valve vaults. I think there's three major valve vaults. Um, about one third of each part of the project. So there will be some work that's the whole road, but. So we, at some point, most of us will expect to not have driveway access then. I, oh. No, 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 everybody will have driveway access. There'll just be a brief period when we have to lay the pipeline across your driveway if you're on the north side. Um. Yeah, that, it will coordinate that with you to where it, it should be virtually no inconvenience to you. Whether it's add another entrance right next to it or just make sure you you have your vehicle out before we cross and then you have your vehicle ability to get back in okay thank you any other questions um anything to add mrs filer or mr gro no just happy it's being done mrs filer says she's happy it's finally being done <laughs> We've been talking about it for how long? 16 years or something like that. Mr. Viviano, anything to add? Mr. Miller from our DPW, we're good. Any other questions? Come on up. Uh, my questions are number one, um, are you guys going to post uh, where the project is so that those of us who about the uh, project and see what part of our property is going to be affected? I'm not sure there's really any posting that other than traffic control, uh, but right now I don't anticipate any work outside of the right of way, which is typically sidewalk to you know, edge of sidewalk to edge of sidewalk. So there well, I should have no sidewalk, so I'm, I'm, I'm curious where it runs. It, across yeah, whatever property. the typical right of way width, I, I, 33 probably, feet, unless you're I, in a subdivision. No, I'm not. I'm on 24 Mile Road. I'm a standard. It could be 33 feet from the center of the road. Yes. Okay. Secondly, have you guys uh, hired an arboriculture firm to uh, do an impact of how it's going to affect the uh, trees along the route that the? Uh, I, I, the I can't main say is that. Be. I'd have to ask my staff if we've hired an arb. arb I mean, we have. We have. Uh, 
Uh, 24 Mile Road has that section between Dequinder, or actually closer to Shelby, over to Mound that has uh, oak trees that could not be replaced in probably five lifetimes. There's gonna, you know, obviously uh, laying this big pipe with this big equipment, there will be some um, pruning. I don't know if uh, there's any intent to do any tree removal, maybe we're in some limited areas, but there will be some tree pruning. There's, there's just no question. Sure, it. I understand when you're moving excavators out. We put, the, we put the pipe in the road to save the trees. Yeah. That's one of the reasons. Right, well, I guess I've, my experience has been I was negatively impacted by the uh, sewer main project that went from 23 mile road to 25 mile road and then west to Eisenhower, Eisenhower High School. And additionally, I was negatively impacted from the project to run the sewer from the 24 mile road where it, across from Cherry Creek up to the new downtown that never developed. And then also, uh, Alexander Woods construction. I have uh, uh, trees that cannot be replaced. They're 100 year old red maple trees. I'm concerned about having further damage. I've already. Uh... Again, I, I, I would encourage you to uh, contact uh, Bill, my general superintendent, and he can meet and, and show us specifically. And we'll, we're, we're going to make every effort to do as least impact. Right. But there will be, I mean, we're. And we've looked at, you know, what are our lifting heights? What does the machine really need? Not just to go in well, and Well, I, I guess clear. my question would also be, once you establish the uh, areas where you're going to be doing the work, is there going to be some construction barriers put in to keep equipment from essentially running over the root system of trees or banging into them, things like that? Um, we typically don't, but we can we can look at that. I mean, certainly if um, if if adding snow fence or something to try to protect or some ribbon to try to protect some of the trees. I know which area you're talking about. The canopy is really low, and it certainly has to be pruned back. So um, we typically get a standard height what the machine needs, and uh, that's the the extent of the pruning. But we could take a look at that. Yeah, well, my concern is more is with uh, soil compaction and damage to the root systems. And then, well, a typical example, the uh, Alexander Woods uh, project, they were doing underground past my house. I was at work. I had an agreement with them. So where they would or would not go, the yeah. snow fence went up. Snow fence doesn't win against a large excavator. I came home. It was parked next to my house. Yeah. We're like going to make something more substantial yeah. to make that delineation uh, how can I put it? Uh, I would like to see it not be something that could be taken down easily and put up back up by the end of the day after said damage was done. It will, we'll, again, we'll, we'll look at each area in each instance. These trees are close to the road. Hopefully the, uh, the construction doesn't impact them, but we'll take a look at it. I mean, again, we, there's a fine line between impacting the root system and ma maintaining its safety of the of the, the crews and the excavation. So we'll look at that. You have something in place to uh, to find a remedy in the uh, in the event that there is damage. If a, if if a tree is damaged and it's too large to replace, it'll have to be removed. And right, if, but is there? I mean, I mean, there'd be a replacement. Obviously, it wouldn't be a large tree, but it would be replaced with a small tree, sure. Yeah. Thank you right now, that. our goal is not to remove trees. Right, so I right. oh, I, I realize that. And I mean, I there, just... may be, there may be a tree that gets impacted. We'll, we'll try to address it. I mean, time. it would be nice to see all the trees, you know, not be impacted at all. The ones that I'm most concerned about are the ones that are very important to my property. Yeah. I would like to uh, take extra measures I'd be happy to work with you guys to do that, to see that that does not Again, happen. we'd certainly be happy to meet you and our hey, staff. Great, I'll get business cards from all concerned parties before I leave tonight. Sure. Thank you very much. Those of us who do live right on the north, north side of 24 Mile Road, 
um, my mailbox is on the road. So will I be responsible for removing my mailbox or you will remove my mailbox? No, we, we typically uh, will remove them and put them up temporarily, maybe one direction or the other, or we'll put them in something temporary to hold them. And then immediately within the same day, we'll put them back up. Okay. If it doesn't happen the same day, please call us. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? No other questions? Well, I, um, I oh, one other thing. Uh, Mr. Jobber, I've got a, qu a couple questions actually today on the phone. They want to know exactly what will the Detroit Water and Sewerage Department do on this project? Because obviously Mr. Mancini is handling most of the road reconstruction. What will your department actually do? Uh, our department will do the quality assurance. Uh, the contractor will do the daily quality control. We'll go out every once in a while. We'll make sure that things are being done per contract. So we are the quality assurance on this job. We have inspector, and we do have a sand project engineer also on this job. Other questions, anybody? Well, first of all, I want to thank uh, Detroit Water and Sewerage Department uh, Director Ms. Sue McCormick for making this possible because she really did take the initiative to, to make sure that we had this opportunity. I want to thank Mr. Steve Mancini from Rickman uh, Construction. Uh, you came up with a lot of great cost-saving ideas that made this possible. I want to thank the county, Mr. Hoffner and Mr. Mark Hackle, for you know hanging in there with us to make sure that we got the agreement that we needed. Janet Dunn, uh, supervisor from Macomb Township, for her involvement as well, and everyone at Fossil County Associates for making sure that all the details, the I's were dotted and T's were crossed, and of course our lawyer, uh, Mr. Rob Hu, who uh, stuck with us the whole way too. It was absolutely a team effort, and I think it started with um, a few of the trustees. A couple of them are here tonight. Night, Mrs. Filer and Mr. Grote, insisting that if we're going to do this project, we need to do both lanes, not just one. And, um, you know, so it started there, and I think it's going to end up with, with a beautiful road. And hopefully it'll be done in two construction um, cycles. So on behalf of the entire Board of uh, um, Trustees, I want to thank all of you for coming here tonight. And ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening. And until the next board meeting, uh, have a good night. Thank you. Thank you.